So I'm starting off the day. I want dopamine to kick in. I want focus, happiness, excitement for my goals. And I want to be super smart. So let's take that example and let's talk about some behavioral things that give the dopamine system buoyancy. And then we can talk about nutritional and supplementation things that really push it a little bit harder. So there are a couple things that we need if we want to be energetic and in focus. And I'm going to add another neurochemical on focus as we go along, just a uh, heads up. So if we want to have energy, we need that norepinephrine system working well. It works alongside a, a neurochemical called cortisol. And cortisol is always talked about as bad, this stress hormone, but you want cortisol high during the morning. You want it to peak in the morning and get you going. It's what wakes you up in the morning out of sleep, actually. And to do that, you, that's why I'm a big proponent of this getting sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning. And if it's in your practice or, or you're inclined to do it, trying to get some movement first thing in the morning. You don't have to do your full bout of exercise. If you do, can do it in the morning, great. But you want to try and get some movement, maybe at least 10, 15 minutes. It could be a walk, could be a run, could be jump rope, could be jumping jacks, could be anything really, just movement. That's going to get the norepinephrine system primed because you have the adrenal glands, which sit above your kidneys and they kick out norepinephrine and cortisol and get your system awake. Now, the dopamine system is really about picking a goal and a target. So this is why it's so crucial to identify what you're gonna try and accomplish in say the before noon or in the first hour of your day or the first two hours of your day, really setting a goal. And even just setting that goal, you should just mentally reward yourself that you're on the right path for setting that goal. And to the extent that other things start to leap to mind, you should really try and push those aside and stay focused on that goal. The reason is if you can stay focused on that and you're gonna get the dopamine reward as you move forward, it's gonna feel, might feel a little tough depending on how well you slept or how poorly you slept. But if you reach that goal, you're gonna feel a dopamine release. It's gonna get you better at focusing on singular goals. Now, there's another way to get your dopamine in the morning that's gonna take you off track. And I'm guilty of doing this. You can also get your dopamine from picking up your phone and starting to you know, flip through Instagram. You'll get your dopamine one way or another but you're not really on a specific path unless your job is to go provide likes for someone that owns an Instagram account. So you wanna pick a targeted goal and you wanna to move toward that goal. And ideally you do it in the early part of the day because it really does prime this dopamine system to be able to do that more regularly. Here's the thing that's really key is forward movement, whether or not it's toward a cerebral or intellectual goal or it's physical exercise, for, literally forward movement triggers release of dopamine. This, uh, my lab published a paper in 2018 in the journal Nature showing that forward movement, especially when there's a low level of stress in the system, when you're a little stressed, promotes the release of dopamine, okay? Forward movement also quiets the activity of the amygdala, this threat detection center in the brain. Forward movement toward a specific goal and you're always in forward movement of some kind. The question is, are you in forward movement toward a focused, valuable goal or not? So that's why, you know, you hear about these practices of setting out the plan the night before, or, you know, some people wake up and they're very focused. Other people like me, I wake up and my mind is a little still discombobulated from sleep because in sleep, our mind is discombobulated. We're not able to form plans. And it takes me a while to transition out of sleep. So I use 10 to 15 minutes of exercise as a way of, of amplifying that epinephrine and dopamine system. So I'm actually just moving towards something. This morning, I didn't have much time. I literally took a, a 10 minute jog. It's not my round of exercise, but it has me moving forward and it puts me on a path. So there are a couple other things. Um, again, not a nutritionist. Um, I don't study supplementation, but there are some things that I do that I think are very valuable and that people in various high-performing communities do. One is a lot of people nowadays are, in, are into intermittent fasting. Fasting itself will stimulate the release of norepinephrine. And in, interestingly, it will also slightly increase the amount of dopamine because it puts you in kind of anticipation of a goal. Now, normally that goal is food if you're very, very hungry. But there's this ancient mechanism whereby when our blood glucose is low, we tend to have, even though we might be a little um, hungry and a little bit agitated, it tends to focus us on things outside ourselves. It means we need something outside ourselves. So we're less content to just sit on the couch or less content to just be quiescent. As uh, Contrast that with after you've eaten a big meal, right? You're, you're probably more comfortable to just sit down and relax. And that's not an accident. So if you're going to practice intermittent fasting, I don't really do that in a strict way. Um, you could do that in the uh, in the morning. Sometimes people find that that helps them improve their their focus because fasting can improve focus. Now these are short term fasts. I'm not talking about day long fasts. I'm talking about just waiting, to, pushing your first meal out. Now in terms of supplementation, okay, I don't own a supplement company, so but I want I want to be clear. But there are some supplements that 
um, can enhance dopamine. And the one that's most powerful in this regard is one that I don't recommend, okay? Um, it's called Macuna Purines. It's actually, uh, it comes from a bean and it's actually pharmaceutically identical to L-Dopa, which is the immediate precursor to dopamine. It is dopamine. Now, the reason I don't recommend it is I don't recommend that anyone take anything that's the chemical itself because you're gonna throw these reward systems out of whack. You're gonna feel great and then you're gonna crash, just like you would if you took a, a drug of abuse like cocaine. But if you take things that are further up the synthetic, the, the pathway, the synthesis pathway to dopamine, you start arriving at what are called amino acids. These are things that are extracted from foods. So you make dopamine from the amino acid L-tyrosine. Now L-tyrosine tends to be enriched in certain foods, and those foods include red meat and nuts. Those foods, if you eat them, make you secrete a little bit more L-tyrosine and will promote the secretion of dopamine. Now it's low level. And of course, if you ingest too much of anything, if you ingest two ribeye steaks, right? Your, your, your gut is gonna be so filled with blood that you're gonna be tired no matter what, you're not gonna feel motivated. But red meat, and in particular, and nuts, various kinds of nuts, increased tyrosine levels, which increased dopamine levels. You can also take, you can purchase and take L-tyrosine, you can buy it in pill form. Now, anyone who's gonna take supplements, I highly recommend you go to the website, which I have no affiliation with, but it's brilliant and I love it, called examine.com. This is a not-for-profit uh, not site where you can put in any supplement and it will link you to the studies on this as well as what they call the human effect matrix where it will show you arrows for upwards if, let's say, um, improves focus, it'll show three arrows or, or it'll, let's say it decreases focus, it'll just say focus with some downward arrows and it will link to the PubMed studies and it will tell you right there if this was done in postmenopausal women or if this was done in kids or if this was done in healthy adults. It gives you all that information and it has some very powerful um, data sets there that are very easy to access. So if you're interested in any supplements that you're taking or that you're thinking about taking, go to examine.com. L-tyrosine, if you take it, you'll notice within about 30 minutes to an hour that you're feeling that you feel happier. You said you wanted a happy bill. You feel um, more focused. You feel more energetic. It is a, an antidepressant. You're synthesizing more dopamine. And if you you know, stack that with a cup of coffee. If that's normally in your practice, don't do this if you have a heart condition. Of course, talk to your doctor about all this, but before you do it, but you will feel energized and focused and positively in anticipation of things. Now, so yeah, so it, so there are real neurochemical approaches to this. Uh, obviously, I think people should do it with behaviors, but do I occasionally take L-tyrosine? Absolutely. Do I occasionally drink coffee? Almost every day. So, you know, coffee is just another drug in the kit. So, so it seems like for, for optimal, like when you wake up for optimal dopamine to kick in for focus and happiness and, and, you know, pursuing dreams and so on, it's like you, you, you get that movement going. So your energy levels go up. So the norepinephrine kicks in, mm -hmm. then you kind of pick a, a, an achievable goal for the, the morning and a target. So that kind of starts kicking in the anticipation. So dopamine starts to spike, which is enhanced by the norepinephrine spiking. Then if you also kind of maybe skip breakfast, have a cup of coffee, take L-tyrosine, that further enhances the dopamine. So now you're all ready to go, you know, for those morning goals, maybe, you know, day goals or whatever. Yeah. And I don't recommend people take L-tyrosine every day. I think you're better off doing it with behavior and behavioral stuff and nutrition. You have to eat every day. So um, the supplementation I think is for occasional use. Now, and there's some warnings on those labels if people are already taking antidepressants and stuff. But for occasional use, I, I find it to be useful. Now, the one thing I want, just want to mention, and I might reference an article that uh, I published with a guy, a former SEAL team member by the name of Pat Dossett. We had an article in Fast Company about, um, it was more geared towards how to deal with stress. But the first point that we made in there was one that um, if you're feeling stressed, it, because sometimes being in forward action, you're caffeinated, you slept well, you're in action, can make you feel stressed and, and you're having a hard time focusing. The way you focus is by training the focus system. And the way you do that is by setting your sights on, on an immediate goal and a horizon that's close in that you know you can accomplish. And it can be an even trivial one. It can be, look, I'm gonna make my cup of coffee, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take care of four email and that's it. 
That's my first goal. Now, of course, that's not your entire goal for the day, but it's goal-directed behavior. And so you're you're coupling the neural circuits for focus with the neural circuits for goal-directed behavior with the neural circuits for energy and agitation. You're getting those aligned. They're, they're coherent. Whereas when you sit down and you look at your phone and you're getting likes from Instagram and trying to take care of some emails, your neurochemical systems are kind of split. They're incoherent. And it's no wonder that by 11 or 11.30, you haven't accomplished much or you feel like you've been kind of overworked and you're a little discombobulated. So there's a reason why in the SEAL team community, you know, there's the kind of famous YouTube video that Admiral Craven gave about, you know, first thing in the morning, make your bed. There's a, there's a reason why in those communities and all military communities for that matter, you have regular, predictable tractable practices that you know you can accomplish first thing in the day. It's not necessarily just about the practice, it's not about having a well-made bed. It's not about making a cup of coffee. It's about you being in control of the control circuits because you have these brain fun- circuits that are involved in controlling yourself and setting blinders on yourself when you need to and moving forward towards those goals. And if you don't practice those circuits, you don't take control of them, your brain is perfectly happy to go get dopamine any number of ways, get serotonin any number of ways. And so you can train up focus, you can train up goal-directed behavior. And what's cool about it is it's an amplifying effect so that pretty soon you get up in the morning, you find yourself naturally in forward motion and naturally targeted on specific goals.